I just pissed my pants. Welcome to the podcast where we talk about anything and everything that comes out of the crapshoot. I'm your host, JD. This is my co-host. Lo Ping. James. <laughs> I call him James. Everyone else calls him Jimmy. It just works like that. I call and him James. L- Everybody else calls him Lo Ping. A lot of things have happened this week, James. A lot of things. Thing lot have happened. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I, I guess expect James to disconnect at any time during this episode. Oh, great. It and sounds like that, huh? There hasn't been any... I don't think it's the... It's the last three... Two or three episodes has been... Uh, there's been moments where you've had to leave for like at least 10 minutes. So... Oh, uh, that might happen again. So, just so everyone knows, because looking at time it is right now, I'll probably have to get up and go let the dogs in because nobody else in my house will. Okay. I mean, did that's you cool. hear a word of what I said there? Yeah, you had to go let the dogs in because nobody else will. Because you're just oh, like okay. the pu- thought, you're, like, you're the pushover of your family. You're like you're like the bottom G. It's if there was a I'm bottom G, so it's, it's just, just nobody oh, else no? fucking wants to do anything. So, yeah. I mean, someone's got to do it, right? And whoever's got to do it, got to be the pushover, man. You see, Andrew Tate would love to do like, oh, I'm, am I losing you? I think I'm losing him. Anyway, though, he he did. I think he said he wanted to talk about something before. Yeah, yeah, I connected to a new new wife. Really, it's working great. Actually, it's amazing. You connected to the new thing, and it's, it's even better than it was before. So I. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. though, I think James no. right now is in the middle of designing Probably. new um, new dudes for mm. us in the Discord, and uh, you know, it looks you more detailed. And wow, this is okay, you good now. Back to the old one. How does that sound? Better than when you connected to that one that was just connected to. Okay. I don't know if you could hear me, gonna... but I I definitely couldn't hear you. Yeah, no, you you were fucking with I, you were fucking. You're like, wow, really? It sounds better than ever. You sound great. <laughs> yeah, on my end, you're like cut. You're like cutting off every like half s- syllable. The weird thing is that I, I was using my phone's like hotspot and stuff, and usually that like which is even worse. Better. But but it's usually better is the thing. But now it's like one bar only. I'm like, but it's never one bar on the hotspot. What the fuck? I'm sure. I'm sure it is, James. I'm sure it is. Just, anyway, though, gonna, I mean, it sounded just fine. Maybe it's the maybe it's the you having the vi- streaming your video thing. that's also yeah, making it I was, worse. I was gonna say. I was gonna say just real quick. I'm just gonna get this out of the way right now. Uh, I have three new guns. I'm very excited to show you. <laughs> okay, let me see them. So first is this very toy uh, neon blue and gray. Uh, Glock and the very special thing about it is that it has an actual blowback. Really? And it ejects uh fake bullets when you shoot. Awesome. Like blanks? It is. Uh yeah, but it just doesn't have any like sort of muzzle flash, so it's like purely safe to use. Awesome. Uh, if it's but... anything like real gun blanks, then we should you should, we should like do a prank where like we put it ne- like next to my head and then a like press it. <laughs> <laughs> we should have loaded a real bullet and start shooting at your neighbors. I'm sure it's like a hilarious to be prank. son putting a blank gun up to his head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Head's blank all the time, you know? But yeah, it's it's really nice. It feels really good for some reason. Like, it's so... It's only like a dollar on Amazon because somebody's selling it for like a dollar. Uh-huh. And it's like four dollar shipping. But it's like it's very it's weirdly good quality. Like it's not like mm. metal and like that kind of like ultra grade plastic, but it's like really good, like high quality plastic. The magazine there, like there should be something concerning nicely. when you hear your friend say this gun feels really good in my hands. But you know, it just it's it's just I line up everything. The gun feels so good in my off. hands and this trigger. I love to pull it while aiming it at it, somebody it just, that I might want to shoot or. It's just. It's just like, Good. Yeah. So, uh, how many other guns do you have? Second. I have two other guns. Okay. Uh, and these are both of Adam's guns for the film, aka Todd oh, Howard. Of course. Oh, oh, why didn't you just say so? I didn't know who Adam was, but I definitely know who Todd Howard is. 
Howard Meister, as uh, the boys so call first... him. <laughs> uh, first up is his uh, pistol, which in the game he only ever uses once. But I just want there to be a reason for this pistol to be in it more because it's such a dumb fucking thing to find. I couldn't <laughs> find the one from the actual game because it's based on an airsoft gun that is dumbly expensive and incapable of being found. Like it's a super rare one that everybody who has it has and it can't be found by anybody else. Everybody who has it doesn't uh, want to sell it. And <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like it's an ultra correct like collector's item. It's sold by a company that has like a bunch of overpriced bullshit, basically. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's like the big like notation of it is that the so apple is like over ten inches. <laughs> hey, what? hey! Oh come on! They came out with the iPhone fourteen and it's, yeah, it was like what affordable no, yeah, or something. It's, it's, yeah, they took out like the SIM card or something. We could talk about that after your gun thing. <laughs> There's no SIM card um, in your gun though, right? The already yeah, an inferior, actually, it's already so an inferior product. <laughs> like, actually goes in right here even, the, uh, even when you said there was i just ignored you and just <laughs> said it was worse anyway yeah <laughs> but it looks like a, it looks like um, a pretty big uh it looks like a pretty big boomer you know it it is it's uh eight inches it's an eight inch long uh barrel length that's not including any of this bit right here yeah that's pretty uh, big the overall length that's really big is, uh either it is and I can't remember if the overall length of the gun is uh, over 13 inches or over 12 inches specifically. It's like within that range right there. At what point is it just uh, the so one long it's so terrible to use? <laughs> uh, the actual one that the game uses, the airsoft gun from that one. Is that one the 12 inch? Because that one is like... That one's like 12 inches in barrel length, not even like full length of the gun, including like the handle and everything. Ah. When you go straight back, that's a just a subway barrel foot long, long like plus little... two. <laughs> well, <laughs> and technically, uh, subway foot longs are only like 11 inches or something. Yeah, they're basically robbing it. Can't you sue them for that? I think someone yeah, did I think, actually. I think, I think someone already sued to. them I for that. So, yeah. <laughs> we, we, were, we were both like, yeah, I think somebody did. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's that. That's also even longer because it has that giant fucking uh, compensator on the end, yeah. which uh, again, it's a very dumb thing to find. I couldn't find anything super close to it, but I did find this uh, airsoft pistol, which is very nice. The cartridge uh, moves around when you fire, so it's not like a only ring action, but you can pull back the camera if you just want to fire it like that, or you can mm -hmm. fire it like that. The uh, it has shells actually, which are a very nice feature for someone who's trying to make a film. These really? little shells with like little clear oh they, yeah they've uh, got bullets in there mm. put a single BB in mm -hmm. and uh, it's gonna be good for filming to have these yeah we should make, make a make, super like, ultra realistic like, film where like instead of fake bullets you put in real bullets and then we can have like actual like like method acting Jared Leto up in this bitch or method acting like getting shot and dying like. Holy yeah, crap, it'll uh, we'll be recreating. Be uh, revolutionize the uh, revolutionize Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing Adam Baldwin's uh, <laughs> or Alec Baldwin's fucking uh, Rust. No, movie, Adam. Whatever he was Adam making. Baldwin. Yeah. Adam Baldwin, the brother. Yeah, Adam Baldwin. From many many shows. The, the what guy who this, only does TV shows. The basically. CEO of Bethesda. <laughs> But yeah, this is uh, this is going to be the pistol that Adam primarily uses uh, in lore, because I'm deciding to add the fucking lore to this goddamn crapshoot of a fucking game. Sure you are. Uh, this Spilled is to the, the brim same with lore, how can you I... stuff any more in? <laughs> this is going to be the same revolver Gordon Freeman uses in Half-Life 1. Uh, this is That's the revolver Adam takes from Black Mesa, because... Black Adam is supposed to be one of the people from that was like attacking Black Mesa with Mitchell and then got out. Uh, so this is going to be a revolver he picks up and within like background canon, it'll be the same one that uh, Gordon uses throughout the game. Yeah. So like it just so, so happens to end up there game. too. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. It's also like if you. Alex, oh my god! I just saw you pull out that. like something huge. <laughs> It's dude, it's so big it's not gonna fit on screen, I don't think. What is that? Is that a sniper rifle? L little sneak peek. Hold on. Wait, 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 let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, so, Hold up now. 
So it's gonna be like if you know the lore of Hunt Down the Freeman and everything, then like you know what happened. Played, I, we Adam played through and, like, the entire game, and I have no idea what the lore is. I know. <laughs> Hold on, I know what the lore is because I've done way too much deep diving on this bullshit. That's why I'm so aggravated about it because it's like it's so lazy. It's so lazy, and that's why I'm trying to like expand it and like fix it and stuff. The more but you I'm, know, the more fucking, you get angry. Fucking Birkin, fucking Birkin, man! I want to, I want to strangle that fuck. Well, man, we're gonna, we've got so many misconceptions mar- of these people. He's probably a really good guy. Have you ever met him in? Have you ever met him? Really? Like, what has he done to you? Huh? Is, what has he done to you? Is, the thing is, that's so funny about that is that <laughs> the only person who I've ever heard say any good thing about him is the I hate everything guy who voices your character. Yeah. <laughs> he's the only person who said anything good, and that's just because he's like, oh, he's like a really nervous guy. You know, he just came up and he's like, I'm trying to make a Half Life fan game. And he's like, he's saying that oh, he's nervous yeah, mean a good thing? Is that a good thing? That's what he was saying, though. He's like, oh, he just, just seems like a really sweet, nice guy and everything. He's very nervous about stuff and everything. And it's like, I'm like, yeah. It's because like, he's nervous <laughs> about being caught in his embezzlement. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's saying. He's fucking stealing the money. He even says that he still hasn't gotten paid for it either. And he's one of the three main characters. Awesome. Um, I mean, dude, like, if, if you mean, had, if you could get a role in the Hunt Down the Freeman video game for free, would you do it? I would do it in a heartbeat. Exactly. I would do it in a heartbeat. Exactly. I want to voice one of the random Marines. What's this guy? Ex military? Just the payday to like swap the voice lines. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just payday. Where do these voice guys lines. come from? <laughs> Make way for the dozer. <laughs> it's just a it's just <laughs> it's fucking splinters days are charging <laughs> <laughs> fucking cloak or something yeah uh, so yeah i'm gonna add it that like uh adam gets it from uh like the g-man and everything like g-man gives him a bunch of stuff cool. uh among this uh, op sniper rifle <laughs> is that the that, csgo like, op sniper cannot- rifle uh, it is because it's also the same one that they have in the video game. I yeah. just don't think we were aware of it because we didn't really open up our like menu. I mean, I <laughs> like opened up the menu, but everything. I just I never really paid attention to any guns. I don't know if you know this about me, James, but I'm not quite a gun nut. So, yeah, whatever the opposite of a gun nut me is. Off about this game, Jay, Jay, that's what that's what pisses me off about this game because Jesus yeah. Christ, I'm hiccuping a lot. Yeah, you're dying, so walk it off. Uh, yeah, I'm dying slowly of poisoning. Uh, <laughs> walk it off. Um, but yeah, so Adam apparently gives us his like sniper rifle when we like meet him after doing the whole like uh crab head like helicopter scene, which you probably don't even fucking remember because even I forgot about this. Yeah, until, I, like, I don't I know what you're talking about. It. But at some point when we're like in that building where we have to do that weird puzzle to like get the elevator going and everything, Adam's standing at the bottom of the elevator just like waiting for us. He's like, hey, Mitchell. And then he just gives us his sniper rifle and I don't think we ever use it. Hey, Mitchell. But, um, <laughs> but uh, that, that part's never going to happen because there's no point for Mitchell to have the sniper rifle if it's Adam's. But uh, it also I learned after looking at Half-Life 1 and the guns that they use in that game. The op, specifically the OD green, which is like odd green uh, colored uh, sniper rifle, was yeah. in that game as one of the HECU's weapons. So this will be a gun he took off a dead HECU along with the P90, which Mitchell's character will be handed, which belonged to one of his previous members like of his unit. Just every gun has a like lore. Adam just literally scavenged. <laughs> yeah, every gun has a lore. Well, that, that's actually genuine. Every person's gun, for the most part, has a meaning to their character because uh, it, it it just feels very fucking empty for a lot of these people's motives. So at the beginning of the game, like during that cutscene where it's just like the hyper like fucking thing of like, ah, oh, Mitchell, you watched somebody commit suicide. Your brother's being taken. You're in the war. <laughs> it's just like this is, the this war. Is so much and so little. It's just the yeah, montage cut, like the, the X-Men cut Origins this. montage cut, yeah. the beginning intro scene. <laughs> but it's Mitchell no, and Adam. It's literally... <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what it is and it's like it's so annoying because it's like cool this doesn't do anything for his character though so like in that scene we see that the beretta that mitchell starts the game out with 
uh, in my version of it, at least, it, it'll have meaning because that'll be the Beretta he uses throughout the whole series. Uh, and it, it's just, I want guns and sure, just well. things to have meaning to these people. I don't want it to fuck off. I don't want it to just be like <laughs> nothing. You know, I want to, I want to give something to these characters who just already have so little. I want to uh, give somebody yeah, to these characters who are nothing. <laughs> but this gun, it's genuinely so much fun to shoot. Like, I'm sure it would sound better so if it nice. wasn't on Discord because Discord cuts off any sound that isn't voice. So, right. Yeah. I uh, my one problem is that the magazine on this loads all the way up here, despite yeah. the fact that it's supposed to load right here, like right. Yeah, under don't the worry fucking, about it, dude. Uh, slide. So that's just right under the place thing. where the bullet should be fired from. <laughs> yeah, you know the you know just the common sense of it because also like. This doesn't move while, like, this is being, like, pulled and shot. Like, uh. when this is being, like, swung around like this, this does nothing to move the cylinder like it's supposed to. It just locks in and out of place. Yeah. Uh, but then when you pull it back, it moves. But even then, it doesn't, like, have an open bolt thing. So, like, I'm going to have to figure out a way around that. But it looks really nice. It feels so nice to hold, too. Because, like, despite the fact that it was only, like, $50, genuinely, it was $50 where these things are, like, usually almost 100 most of the time. Yeah, well, that's a pretty, it that's a feels, good steal. It was, it was like on a sale and I'm like, I was debating it and I just bought it. Uh, I'm going to have to buy a scope and a bipod for it though, which are like the things that are probably going to cost the most with it. I see about 50 bucks and then <laughs> total up to 100. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is probably, because it's like, it, it only takes like a, a very specific bipod because it has this already like installed, I can't even see it already installed little port thing right here oh there's like a little notch to put that in yeah by the way i had to physically assemble this whole thing and screw it in like this thing just like an ikea furniture item (laughs) yes like an (laughs) ikea furniture item i had to put the sniper rifle gun together Mm. uh yeah it feels really nice so i i can't wait to uh I just can't wait to like film this because like it feels so nice and like I've been looking at it like in little tests that I do on like my camera and everything. It just looks really nice for like the whole action of it. I, I even in like the uh, print of script if I ever like again if I ever move on from like this little area that I want to get filmed and I move with the story on to like uh, the twenty year time jump and everything going to city seventeen and all that stuff. I've written like this little part for Adam to have this whole sniper scene. Uh, mm-hmm. Because just how nice this feels like it, it literally just <laughs> this gun just getting it and holding it like playing with it inspired me to write a whole scene for it <laughs> because it just feels really nice. Huh, that's totally sane and I completely understand. Uh, well, it's better than uh, what, I, what has been happening to me, which is just getting burned out because you're getting burned out. Not by this. That's the problem is that it's not this uh. that's burning me out. It's no. work, and it's the fact that I have to work through this whole weekend and so on, yeah. because one fucking coworker can't do their job all week. So now it's being left up to me to have to pick up the slack. Okay, the whoa, 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 whoa! This isn't a this isn't another episode <laughs> know, where you golf under coworkers. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I just want to like make a little thing like I, I'm getting burned <laughs> out, so I'm trying to find little things to help inspire me, which this I gun see. did, the revolver did. Okay, I'm and I'm a lot pretty of sure I wrote shows. down what you, what else you want to talk about, and this will probably be a, a yeah, good chunk what? of this episode too. You said you wanted oh, to talk yeah. about the Nickelodeon 24-hour content dude who watched Nickelodeon shows and reviewed them. Yeah, so Quentin reviews Q U I N T O N reviews. Yeah. He, for some reason, back in 2020, I think it was like a stretch goal or something. Yeah. Uh, he had where he was going to like uh, watch iCarly and just go over how weird and random that show was because they were putting out the reboot and stuff. Oh, right. There was a reboot. Is that still happening or it's did it get still canceled? still going on. And it's still getting like new episodes and stuff. Oh. Uh, I don't know if it's good. I haven't looked at it. And neither is Quentin, by the way. He hasn't gone into that part yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but he... He originally just started this simply out with like going over like the weird stuff that hasn't aged well and everything. And it's just it's been a man weird stuff. What kind of weird stuff? Uh, you know, the gratorious uh foot stuff that he makes people do, especially underage kids. Uh, <clears throat> Rob Schneider. 
Yeah, maybe there's another one of your misconceptions of people, right? <laughs> it, it, well, it is not, JD. He has been charged. He, he is a charge. Oh, oh, is he is he in jail right now? Did they finally get him? I think they're still pending the case and everything, but uh, he has been charged with like this weird like child porn stuff. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, he was like deeply involved with it. Like Jeffrey Epstein was like loosely attached and stuff. It's it's not just wow. Skeptic. That honestly it, it, shocks me, James. I, I never saw it coming. Who could have seen it? Not me. <laughs> the head of Nickelodeon sitcoms and Jeffrey Epstein. The head of Nickelodeon <laughs> sitcoms <laughs> and even when I was a kid and I saw like our Kali show on and I saw like them doing all the feats, I was like, huh, that looks a little weird. Yeah, I think everybody. I don't has know anyone reaction. who does that. I I think the biggest thing is like nobody thought that was normal like we all collectively agreed it wasn't normal but just nobody knew how to process it it's just like that it's just like that cooking tiktok uh trend that's been happening where um they inc like for like 90 percent of the content seems fine but then it's like that 10 percent that's super sus so like in this tiktok like this cooking tiktok is just a normal cooking tiktok then like halfway through it you get hit with like these two men just kissing each other randomly like a random clip out of nowhere and then it cuts I've right back that. to the, it cuts I've right back to the cooking video like nothing ever happened <laughs> oh oh god uh so somebody good. was going over the yakuza game and they had a scene like that in it where they were yeah. like, the cooking in Yakuza, it's just so great. And then they turn away and put on their glasses. And as they do that, there's a scene of the main character fucking thrusting into another guy from behind. But it's not like actual. I think he's like trying to give the Heimlich, but it's supposed to be suggestive because it's yeah, Yakuza. It lasts, and it lasts and it like two away. seconds long. <laughs> it's so quick. And then it cuts away and comes back and he puts his glasses on and keeps going on like with how philosophical the cooking in Yakuza is. How like accurate and like amazing the... They How delicious the and real the food looks, despite the age of the film, of the game. <laughs> yeah. It's like that, but in like iCarly, it's like most of the episodes, like oh, iCarly wants to make a he's making a funny YouTube video. Well, oh, feet, and then it comes right back to the normal. Oh, look at how oh. funny the character's mom is. It's quirky. <laughs> so, not trying to jump forward too much because I wanted to focus on the iCarly part first. Okay, but in the Victoria show, it's yeah. even more gratuitous. Like. Is it? It's, I didn't watch it's that one. So much more present. I don't think I've seen anything like that. that. I remembered one scene, and I didn't remember any of the others. Tell it to and me in excruciating detail. So the one I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lacey. Well, <you> bye. <laughs> okay. Well. Bye. <laughs> that's, that's such iconic fucking part of it. <laughs> yeah nobody if you understood that reference good for you awesome man how do you feel that they had to get rid of that voice actor <laughs> <laughs> um but <laughs> which one <laughs> tails uh tails uh knuckles amy and uh they just got rid of everyone what are you talking about it's like yeah, everyone because, because they were doing multiple voices for it yeah. And it's they played four of the characters, but it was like they were also like super shitty and problematic. So, you know, shitty and problematic, man. I don't know anyone like that. Let's move on. <laughs> I got a brother or two like that. Dude, my family is 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 perfectly clean, squeaky clean, dude. Let's dude, move on. Your aunt texting you in this moment now. <laughs> yes, she actually has been nonstop texting me again for the past week. <laughs> we'll, we'll we can go into, into that, that later if you're interested, but. Yeah, uh, so mm -hmm. back back to it. I I didn't realize how weird it was and everything. Like, I knew it was weird, but it's like do, him doing this overview and everything, it made it even more clear because he had set he's up taking thing. all of the, these clips out of, like, these different episodes, right? Because they, they are not long, right? They're not, like, really long bits. They're, like, no, the bits aren't really long, but, like, I think the episodes are all, like, at least 30-ish minutes. Yeah. Like, within that range, and there's, like, seven seasons of iCarly but mm -hmm. it, it's it, apparently it's so mentally taxing to watch through them all that like it takes him a minute because he also has like he's not going is he he's like not binging watching, through it no he's not watching every single episode and then writing the review he's doing like in batches because it was like he realized after watching 10 episodes straight that he had to genuinely stop and like just kind of process everything and it really like was it just making him really depressed <laughs> Make it, it's making him insane. <laughs> it genuinely is because like you watch. Yeah, that's gonna be us when we when we ever watch Transformers. <laughs> if, 
<laughs> no, I, I'm aware of that. That's why I want us to watch it, though, because it's going to be so fucking funny. Thank God that we're never actually going to do it unless unless one of these days you get, like, a little bit of free time or something. Your mom's out of town I'm again. almost sure that's never going to happen. Uh, JD, listen, your mom's going to be out of town again. We can do it's, this. It's going to take just as long as when you finish your computer that you bought. You finish building Back your computer. to it. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. Let yeah? me tell you something. Yeah? Wait, 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 wait. Um, but like, it's it's so fucking bizarre because like the story is even weird. Like, the way the characters act and everything, they don't fully explain it. They they really in, the, ditch... in like the Nickelodeon shows, or is it just yeah, like Carly? In all the shows, it's like they just kind of like. I thought I know they operated. So. They operated on sort of like a SpongeBob formula, where it's not like there's one big overarching plot. It's like every episode is kind of like its own mini plot. Kind of, but also they have like these kind of like running like gags and stuff between the episodes. Gibby back to stuff. <laughs> so that's something. That's something. That's a whole thing. Uh, <laughs> that is a whole thing right there. That's a whole. That's fucking not part thing. of a thing. That is the whole what? thing. There's a Gibby pilot. For a Gibby TV show. I think I remember something like that, you know? And, like, the script got leaked online, and Quinn, like, he reached out to the uh, crew and had gotten screen grabs and, like, little shots of, like, uh, the teleprompter that had, like, four different camera angles of some of the yeah, shots. Yeah, I heard they canceled it because they thought it was terrible. Oh, it, it is. From what I've seen, it was terrible, and I think they can very easily change it. But, like, the problem is they wanted to keep Gibby as a teenager still. Mm-hmm. And it just but doesn't at that work. point wasn't he just a uh, a young he man? Was early twenties. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing: he was like four years younger than the other main characters, but he was supposed to be like Dang. pretending to be the same age while they were playing down their age to be like thirteen while they were like fifteen and stuff. And he was eleven, having to play thirteen. Wow. And Props. so like he he's was a pretty, he's a pretty talented. Yeah, dude. I think he does like YouTube now. YouTuber. <laughs> He's, he does YouTube. I know he's on that Goldberg's TV show as like one of the uh, side characters and stuff. Oh. Uh, with the uh, fucking Shane from uh, Smosh. <laughs> yeah, they're both on that show together. And it's so fucking weird. It's hilarious. Because <laughs> they're both playing teenagers still, but it's like you guys are like almost in your 30s. What is this? <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's. The Gibby show is a whole fucking thing because it's like it's really weird how they keep trying to make him still a teenager. They made him take off his shirt a lot and everything, and it's like, oh yeah, that was a thing with Gibby that's, is that that's he's always thing. shirtless. Uh huh. And, and it wasn't a thing that happened. Double standards, James. Why can't all the other? Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> Dash you... Sider walked into the boardroom. He's like, guys, so we don't think Gibby takes off his shirt all the time. Why don't we have everyone take off their shirt? We have Spencer <laughs> take off his shirt. <laughs> But um, Quinn, Quinn discovered that there were so many bad things that these characters did and that happened. Oh, in yeah. The show. Name one. <laughs> That's uh, what I thought. Spencer exposes himself to a group of children. Sorry. Uh, the main character, Spencer, the older brother of iCarly. Yeah. Uh, indecently exposes himself to a group of children that include Gibby. Is that like on purpose? Uh, he's in the shower. Yeah. And that giant group of children run into that shower and also at the same time are tearing clothes off of a woman, making her almost bare naked. Uh, that while sounds she pretty is, funny. While she is being chased into that shower by them. So now that she sounds Spencer double has expo- funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be, but it's very heinous. Uh, also, they uh, commit active like acts of terrorism. Just Man, very that's in like often. every TV show. They literally create a nuclear bomb in one episode and just shrug it off. That's like, not, that's so not a bad. joke. No, that's not a joke. They genuinely make a nuclear bomb. That's not so bad. <laughs> it's so fucking weird because it's just like they shrug it off and it's like, what, what is this? What is this plot? What, what happened here? The plot is they want to make a nuclear bomb for whatever various means they want to use it no, for. No, they were supposed to and make then... an energy saving device, and instead they made a nuclear fucking bomb. Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> when this happen? sometimes when you're when you're what elementary your middle school project where you need to High make school. an 
energy saving bomb high you, school sometimes you just accidentally make a nuclear one um <laughs> it's so weird uh it, it's very clear that like they they don't know what they were doing with like these kids <laughs> because it's their character traits are changing so often that's like one of the things i realized is that they only realized what they were doing like at season four with them and then just yeah. kind of like made that their entire personality. I think they from the a... very few episodes I watched, they all, I, I think I, I thought they were like all like the same kind of character. It was like goofy. They kind of uh, are, but like they have their like bombastic. traits that just kind of came out of nowhere for no reason. Yeah. It's these things I learned called flanderisms, which is uh, when like a character just randomly gets a trait and that's their entire character. That happened to Gibby a lot. He would yeah. just randomly be given something and like, this is your entire character. Because there was a whole season where he had a 3D print of his head, and that was just it. That was his character the entire season. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> that's that's not a joke. That's just genuinely something that happened. And I don't know. Like they went to pawn stars and pawned off the head. You know, Las <laughs> Vegas is pawn stars. Pawners, anyone? Any pawners in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but they, they, their list of crimes is like genuinely so large. I think it reaches the hundreds. Man, I think you're just exaggerating. I'm not though. I've I'll, watched, I'll believe it when I see I've it. Watched, I've calculated how many hours I've watched it. I lost the calculation a while ago. But like, I was, I was kind of struck by amazement by how much of this guy's stuff I watched because I've watched every piece of his Nickelodeon content. I'm waiting for the second part of Sam and Cat to come out. And I understand why he's like so depressed after watching all of this. I feel so yeah. bad for him. Like he doesn't need to do this, but he really wants to just finish the story and be done with it. But he just keeps like just getting depressed, just stopping. <laughs> this, this show is so genuinely taxing. I know, man. This guy just seems weak to me. Katie, you watch, you watch all all of this content. Tell me. Well, that. you see, I don't need to, so I'm not going to. <laughs> But yeah, that was like his, his whole <laughs> And none just... of you in the comments will ever convince me to do something like that. So his uh his videos are like they're really good. They're really good forms of like long long form entertainment that I uh I genuinely enjoyed because it was like it really helped throughout the work day when I was just kind of really bored and needed something. Yeah. I didn't have any podcasts, so I found this guy's YouTube channel by accident. And I just watched the videos and they're so good. They're like genuinely so well made. They're very well edited and stuff. Uh, he has this whole like. He and they're talking about a topic that you've always been interested in. Minors. Specifically female minors. Right, James? JD, what have you done? <laughs> what, what have I've you opened just up, done? I've opened up the doorway for anyone to come and pick out this clip out of and context out of context for <laughs> and for you my old friend dude dude like eight years later from this point now when we become like a big youtube thing and one of us get in a scandal it's not gonna happen. there's gonna be an edit of that audio with this clip playing under it and for you, and my, old you my old friend the lawsuit has opened up to swallow you whole <laughs> So don't keep the devil waiting. <laughs> don't keep the jury waiting, old friend. Don't keep the jury waiting is pretty good. <laughs> oh, uh, but yeah, he goes over all of iCarly. Uh, there's a character in it called Lubert. Who I you're don't supposed remember to, that one. He's the bellboy, and you're supposed to hate him. And I did as a kid because I thought he was like the landlord guy. He's literally just a lowly fucking bellboy. He's not. He's not anything. He's not, like, the owner of the fucking building. He's just a guy who, like, rings you in and stuff. Oh, you know what? I'm starting to remember who that is now. He's a big wart, and he's just it's supposed the, to... Be... Um, it's, like, the white blonde kid, right? No. No? Ah. No. Luber is, like, the kind of greasy-looking... Uh, he has a big wart and everything. The white blonde kid is Neville. Uh... Oh, that's that's what, what... Luber. Oh, yeah, I sort I re they... sort of remember him. <laughs> One of their acts of terrorism is blowing him up. They killed him? They literally fucking plant a bomb in a basket of muffins and just blow him up on live entertainment. They were Logan Paul before him. Why don't I remember this guy? The, he looks the, like he's the, so memorable with the warrant on his face. But did you look him up? Yeah. But I yeah, definitely don't remember him. He, he's a character that they write you to hate. 
But then, like, they keep putting context clues in, like, the story. And, like, Quint also dives into the online content. And, like, they online have an online... content, huh? Yeah, so, like, they had an actual iCarly.com for, like, the website that's in the show. And yeah. they post status updates. And, dude, Looper is one of the most tragic fucking characters of all fiction. Like, really? He, he is such a fucking that tragic character. That seems, like, character. kind of... I don't kind know. of a stretch. I don't know why they did this though. They like literally wrote him to be like this gross guy that you're supposed to hate. But the kids are so unnecessarily cruel to him because we never see him do anything to them, nor is it ever written or talked about. And really? it's like he has this he has this backstory where he he has never been loved by anyone ever. Like nobody has ever shown him any sort of affection or anything. Jay, dude, with that kind of face, I understand. <laughs> no, but here's hey JD, JD, yeah? here's the thing. Yeah. That's not his real face. Hmm. He had, he had plastic surgery to look that way. It like canonically in the show. Canonically in the show, he had had pla- plastic surgery to look that way because he was escaping an abusive ex who had literally beat him so badly he had been put in the ICU several times. That is canon. How about ignoring that? He got plastic surgery but didn't remove the wart, or did he have that put on? He had it put on. He literally had his appearance changed so much that he wanted to be unrecognizable as the person he once was. That was added on. Like, this was old stuff added on and everything. It, it, dude, it's so, like, going... It, there's so much more to it. His mother, like, apparently, like, fucking beat him and everything. Like, again, all canon. It, it's yeah. so weird that they wrote all this and, like, made this, like, bunch of weird, like, subtext and stuff that they bring up just every now and then randomly. Yeah. It's so fucking bizarre. I mean, and it seems just, perfectly normal to me. No, but then, like... It's just your average Friday Friday night. <laughs> Then you learn all this info, and then you watch the show, and you just watch them fucking blow him up. Like it's just funny. fucking plant a grenade in his fucking muffins. It's, and it's just funny. Blow him up on live TV, and they're like, "It's funny." It's, it's like, funny. This is tragic. No, it's funny. I uh, there's there's a lot of specific stuff I can tragedy go into, but... and comedy of two sides of the same coin, James. <laughs> they, yeah. I, there's a lot of stuff I can go into. I'm just gonna bring up like a few topics, and then I'm gonna move on to like Victorious and then Sam and Cat because I'm taking way too long with this. That'll be the stuff that I have no idea of. <laughs> uh, so there, there's an episode called iCarly Goes to like Japan or something. Really? Uh, it was their big special episode where they the uh, crab shoot fight. special. <laughs> we should do a crab shoot special where we go to Japan. <laughs> dude we go to japan and i try to get you to harass as many people as we, <laughs> we see become, see what we, see how much harassment we can get through before you get kicked out god that'd be horrible skirting line <laughs> be a menace to the japanese people who i have break done nothing that, wrong i break onto the airfield that they have that life-size gundam on yeah no, it'd be hilarious <laughs> if, like, it. it'd be hilarious if like i'm the one who's harassing everyone but since you're next to me they just blame it on you instead <laughs> Foreigner. Foreign weak. <laughs> Point toward you. <laughs> How do you say weak in Japanese? Uh, yo why, I think. <laughs> yo why. Yo why. <laughs> Shindu. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's iCarly Goes to Japan, and this is an episode where Quentin brought up something he realized after watching all this. Yeah. Rob Schneider has a weird obsession with Asian people, and Really? You can't tell if Rob Schneider hates Asian people or if he likes them. Because there's so much hate and animosity written into each of their characters. None of them are like played like normal people. They're uh-huh. all stereotypes. Every Asian person has an accent. Yeah. Like they don't they don't have like a an American That's accent. Pretty accurate. Or, like, some, some sort of other accent. They all have like the stereotypical Asian accent, but they're all played by like non I will tell you this. James, the stereotypical people. Asian accent is like eighty percent of Asian people in America. I know, but like it's it's not being played by people who actually have that accent. It's American people <laughs> doing that accent. These are still American actors yeah. who are Asian. They're not from it's Japan. Fi- or it's like fine, dude. Places. No problem. I mean, you ever what? You ever you see uh, Uncle Roger? It's nothing. No one. No one hates him. Well, maybe some people hate him. Probably the chefs that he shit on. <laughs> yeah, but I think he's pretty. I think he's pretty knowledgeable to shit on them though. Is he an actual <laughs> chef or? I don't know. I mean, he's done a bunch of shit with Gordon Ramsay. That's true. <laughs> Where he shits on Gordon Ramsay the whole time. Hi, <laughs> uh Hi, uh I love Uncle Roger. He's great. I haven't uh, watched anything from him really. 
<laughs> I, I always get his stuff on TikTok. He's always really funny. He does like a lot of stuff with that guy who's like uh the like I'm disappointed in you, nephew. <laughs> <laughs> What did I do? What did he bring like his Asian friend? And it's it's pretending to be his nephew or something. No, like the guy's whole character is that he plays these two people. He plays this guy in like a business suit. He's you've probably seen memes of him where he's like, I will send you the Jesus, and he's like holding like a, a fucking flip flop and he has on like a suit jacket and everything. Hmm. Uh and he's just he's always playing this character where he's like just always angry with his nephew. He's always disappointed by his choices because he's not traditional, like in the culture. And he's just like, "Why are you? Why are you like this?" It's just, like, well, "I'm disappointed in you." What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really it's really good. Honestly, I'm not doing a good job at defending it, but it, it's the characters. The way Rob Schneider writes them is so fucking bizarre because, like, he none of them are good people. Whenever he writes them, they're always so mean. true to real life just... true to real life <laughs> yeah how many people just... how do people you meet in real life they're just super nice to you and comp not assholes at all and they're all just like I'm pristine law-abiding citizens i don't know i'm usually stuck in one place that's only full of the opposite of all that jd all full of people so who will be really... rob schneider works <laughs> dude they'd all support the hell out of that man dude they they, they act like they're in a rob schneider film what the fuck <laughs> rob schneider project but um like Carly goes to Japan it's just so like mean and offensive and everything and like Quentin even like reached out to people who are traditionally from like Japan or like speak the language and everything like hey how is their translation their translation is really bad here or this is a really <laughs> or like this is a a really offensive depiction of like what our culture is like this is literally not what any of this is like and everything it's just it's a lot of that. That's what that whole episode was. And the thing is, I really like that episode because I didn't understand that any of it was bad until like recently before I even watched these videos. Like I just kept hearing about it. I'm like, oh shit, was this problematic the whole time? <laughs> was this thing I liked really bad this whole time? You like the, uh, uh, the Japanese episode? Yeah, as a kid, I thought it was like really good and everything. And then like growing up, hilarious. I realized it was bad. Except I've never seen it, so... <laughs> <laughs> we should do a crapshoot special react to just the iCarly, iCarly goes, goes to Japan goes to episode. Japan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. That won't happen. We'll, we'll be releasing that in the John Tron episode <laughs> together. <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be a bonus at the end of the John Tron episode. <laughs> it'll be a batch recording. <laughs> uh but yeah, it's like it's it's just all of the Asian characters are in that way and everything, and then it's uh some of the other big points is that they have the crossover with Victorious. Right. And it, I'm pretty sure they were both airing at the same time at one point, right? So how it happened is that like after season three, oh no, my cats are fighting. Stop it. Stop. No, don't stop them. Wait until see, see who, see who the stronger one emerges Victorious, you know? The, the black and white one, which is the youngest of the two, just whenever she does this, she just sits at the top of my bed and holds her mouth open just like, like she's breathing but not like changing it she's just sitting there with it agape just staring down at the other cat like mm -hmm. not making any noise or like I mean, hissing it's just, or anything. It's, it's just, just so asserting weird. her dominance you know i don't know if it is i just don't think she knows how to react <laughs> it's a to show things. it's a show of aggression you know i think i think she's lost too many brain cells after smashing her head in the wall so much a real thing she does <laughs> she literally runs up to walls full force and just slams her head in again grates her head against it and what a perfectly get, normal habit to do I know she's trying to like scratch her head, but she does it so violently that I get really worried about her. <laughs> but um, yeah. It they after season three of like Harley, they uh the writers wanted to keep writing, but like they couldn't because uh Miranda Cosgrove Carly was like off doing stuff, and so like they had to like leave Another the project projects? for a little bit. Yeah, she was like doing a music tour and everything. Right. Uh, and so the writers left the fourth season like a good group of them left the fourth season and made victorious ah and then like uh what was left of them were like a skeleton crew and it's like there's a very clear change in the writing and the characters like carly is barely in a good portion of episodes in season four <laughs> like despite it awesome. being her show she's yeah. barely in it because of it uh it's so fucking weird uh they decided to weirdly add this plot where sam's character is in love with spencer which is still weird because Sam's character is like a like sophomore. 
in high school and, and james spencer, and, and, and spencer is like a full-grown adult who's gone through college and law school oh yeah god he went to law school uh there's like a weird episode where they they awkwardly hate on disney because disney made their own version of like iCarly according to nickelodeon and what, what, what show was that uh sunny with a chance which never by the heard way, of that fun I fact no about sunny that is. With, it's a show i genuinely liked uh but fun fact about sunny with a chance it was a show about a fake tv show like a fake skit tv show called yeah. that so random and after sunny with a chance ended that's so random became a real TV show. And on that's Disney? where <laughs> on Disney, like the actual show, like the skit show became a real thing. And guess what? That's where Shane from Smosh comes from. Yeah, I was about to say, because I remember the one bit that he did was like, I'm Shane from Disney. That's, that's so, so random. random. <laughs> All right, everybody be cool. Put the money in the bag. <laughs> that's, that's still really funny. He's so fucking, he's great. Pretty good at improv. Uh, they're, they're really good. Him and Damien, I think, are like un like unmatched in how good they are with some of their skits. Mm -hmm. Damien's a uh, fucking detective. One always gets me. That's the story of Noah's dead ass pet. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so good. Now, what he is saw caught, and why? How can I get there? <laughs> <laughs> the one he did during their like hundredth uh fucking you laugh you lose thing yeah uh he did it it was so good he's like and that's the case of keith's cancer because keith actually has cancer and he throws like a burnt lung on the ground <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so good i think there's there's a funny just because they uh they can get a bit darker than the other ones yeah <laughs> No, it's really good. It was it was Nickelodeon getting back to it. It was Nickelodeon responding to uh, Disney making the show, and it was just them being very mean for no reason. And they uh -huh. even did that again when, like, on American Idol at the time, uh, one of the winners had won, and he had like dedicated it for in like the name of his uh like die like his grandma who had cancer at the time. Speaking of, uh, yeah, <laughs> and your favorite kind of people, the Nick. JD, two of my family members died from cancer. What are you trying to suggest here? I'm trying, maybe I'm trying to suggest something else, but go ahead with your thing. Yeah, what are you trying to say, JD? No, what nothing. Don't worry about it. Huh? Huh? Yeah, it's what I thought. Trap card, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the case of how James' family members died of cancer. Diplomatic immunity, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, but. They uh during the American Idol one, like in real life, the Nickelodeon uh writers were like very upset by who won. So they yeah. wrote it into the episode, like the other guy who had the grandmother dying cancer was faking it and she was a very horrible person, so was he. Mm. Um and then in real life, that guy that they had made fun of, his grandma like died three days after that episode aired. Ah, uh, that's so <laughs> and so it's so fucking awkward, like if you know the real timeline. Uh there's just there's just a lot of stuff. Running out and time. those writers just feel like really fun people. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> We'd love to get them on to the, well, one of these uh, crap shoots and just ask them what were they thinking inside the head of theirs. My my favorite bit from the entire thing because I'm just gonna end it with the iCarly thing here because I'm again I'm taking too long. I'm not discussing enough. But uh, sure, my favorite we bit, haven't even reached an hour yet. But okay. I know. I just I feel like I'm taking up too much time with it. I'm, I feel like I'm not getting to the point fast enough. Uh. What my favorite bit though <laughs> my favorite bit though is that he never acknowledges the existence of rob schneider who uh Qu <laughs> quentin during the oh, entire quentin review, doesn't acknowledge rob schneider yeah he never once like in any of the set the several videos even the fred ones uh because he covers fred which is a technical part of this hmm. uh was rob schneider not... behind fred too or a little bit like he was still part of like the whole nickelodeon head of it thing right so he was part of it when the fred movies were coming out in a way mm -hmm. but he never once acknowledges rob schneider he just simply keeps saying but it would be a shame if there was just one person we could point to about all this weird and bad stuff too bad they don't exist you know the corporation 
Nickelodeon. No, no, that is the never, real bad guy. He never blames Nickelodeon. He never blames anyone. He just simply does not acknowledge Rob Schneider's existing to the point that in the final episode, when Rob Schneider makes a cameo appearance as a mechanic, he oh. he rotoscopes Rob Schneider's entire head to just be TV static. <laughs> well, I thought you were going to say you deep faked him to be someone else, no, like Jack it's, Black it's, or something. It's, <laughs> it's genuinely so terrifying because, like, the character has a fake beard and he keeps the beard there, but the entire head, like, all the skin yeah. is just TV static. So he's just talking about it. He's like, Jesus. you see, Sam shows up to a mechanic shop to get the, bike, the motorcycle repaired, but for some reason, she's not talking to anyone. And it just cuts to the actual scene with the fucking edit. And it's just yeah. it, it cuts to his character and the lines are completely muted. It's just TV static as he just stands there. It's like loudly playing like Shh. she's just like, like yeah, an, it's just like an entity from the back room. <laughs> yes, it's so it's so good. It's like again, the editing is really good. It's a really funny review and I know it's a lot to get through, but it's so worth it because the content is so good. Mm. Um and then he moves on to Victorious. Now he had never seen Victorious. Uh-huh. Like it genuinely wasn't a show that he had watched because even though he's only a few years older than like even me, I know I'm an old man. What? Calm down. <laughs> well, how old is he then? Like 134 now? 25. Ah, or right. 28, I think maybe. Like last last month, maybe. Anyway, I've also I, never watched Victorious, so it, he, I wouldn't know. He kept talking about like how he was very confused by stuff, like how it didn't connect with him in the same way, how he didn't have like the same sort of affinity for it. Yeah. And oh, he had an affinity for iCarly, huh? Yeah, because he had watched iCarly. It was coming out when he was like young and everything. Uh, and apparently, by the way, iCarly kind of very like it kind of depicted stuff nicely, like what it's like to be a famous streamer and stuff, like the actual problems that you'll have, like going to he conventions. He was predicting without- the future. <laughs> it, it actually did a couple times do a really good job but also <laughs> was really like fucking just tone deaf as well uh, <laughs> also it stopped being about the fucking iCarly show like by season 3 it was no longer a main part of the thing so it's just so fucking weird oh that's cool Michelle Obama showed up for an episode in iCarly or in Victorious in iCarly oh I, I just forgot to bring that up but uh, in Victorious uh it it really focuses on the fact that these are not good people. <laughs> like he, he every points every out, character like, in the show, almost every character in Victorious is not a good person. <laughs> they are all very selfish, very horrible, mean spirited, or just creepy people. I mean, and that sounds about true to life. Yeah, there's even a weird running joke that implies that the character Robbie, the guy with the puppet, yeah, sexually like assaulted Ariana. Guy. Yeah. It's implied that he sexually insulted, assaulted Ariana Grande's character. Little did you know, James, it's what he actually did in real life. And they wrote it into the script as like a funny little like. Uh... That's a thing, <laughs> funny by the way, J.D. Back. You're what? making a joke there. That's a yeah. thing that happened in a different scenario. What? I'm going to tell you about that right now before I forget. There's a character named the Burf. B-U-R-F. B-U-R-F? Burf? Yes. And this character, by the way, the only gay representation on the entire show. He's gay. Well, he's now open- I can't watch the show anymore. <laughs> he openly hits on Robbie's character as well as other like female characters. So he's like, bye. But it's the only representation of the entire show. <laughs> and, and it's from it's from like a tone deaf, like they were represented as a tone deaf, like creep or something. No, he's just a weird guy who's always dressed in like 70s, like kind of clothing and eats uh, bell peppers. Just whole. Oh, oh OK. That's his character. Uh, he's it's actually a quirk. He has some actually pretty good scenes, but um, <laughs> I'm just remembering a few of them. I love his from name. First watched his them. name. Yeah, his name. By the way, that's the uh, when you were like, yeah, it's a little joke that the crew had and everything that got written into it. Yeah, his name was a joke among the cast because his full name was Burf Defect. That's his name. That's his in canon name. Is Burf Defect? Yes. B U R F, yeah, defect. Well, normally, like the, mm-hmm. mm. and uh, <laughs> this this character has existed since like the borderline first season, by the way. Because yeah. again, the web content, Burf was a an unseen character who held a camera for the character of Sinjin. 
uh, Sinjin was like a weird uh, fucking ginger kid with like curly hair and everything. Uh-huh. And Burf kind of took over Sinjin's place as Sinjin became a bit more flanderized. Huh. Uh, but it's it's so fucking bizarre because like Burf technically existed since back then as he was the guy that was always holding Sinjin's camera. And his character, Burf's character, by the way, also yeah. changed from the online web content and the live action stuff because they filmed little videos as like a mock. This is like a mock Twitter. Yeah. The online web stuff. It's like a mock Twitter. So they like film videos, they make posts and everything. And his character on there is super aggressive for no reason. When the show, he's like very passive. Yeah. But you know, that's, but when you're online and you can, when you're an online persona, you can just be your true self, you know, the, uh, the foot stuff gets worse. Does it? Yeah. Especially on the on- online stuff. There's, there's, there's so much. There's did so he cover that? Magic. Did Quentin cover that in his, uh, there were two back to back ones that were really bad. So it gets worse than, I think the only foot stuff I remember from iCarly I, I know there was more of it, but I only remember like they start the episode out and they're doing the like they're recording the online show. And I think they're like they drew like little faces on their toes or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that was like and they were like wiggling at the camera. And that was like the only foot stuff I remember from that. There's there's some other stuff. Again, when I was a kid, I didn't think that was weird because I was like, oh, yeah, they're just right. like messing around with the Right. This you, 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 in he's retrospect, pro- in retrospect, he's programming you, JD. Rob Schneider's programming you. In retrospect, maybe it wasn't such a normal thing, <laughs> and and I was just a kid and had no idea. But now that I'm uh, a little bit older, <laughs> I can see the problems that, that are in front of my eyes. <laughs> no, but you know, Birth is also a uh, 2015 movie. <laughs> Spelled exactly the same. Way. <laughs> it's a 2015 movie from IMDb. What's it about? It is about. It's a drama. Of course. And no one has added a plot yet for it, so I don't know Are what there it any it's about. Things? Yes. Um, Sucky Ball. <laughs> Nerpe. Uh, Do- Dollywall. Raj Dollywall. Yes. The first name. Sucky Ball. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm butchering these names. I'm pretty sure that's not how it's pronounced. That's just how it's spelled. Me too low. Holy shit. <laughs> Sucky ball. <laughs> Drag on D's. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is actually named Baby Nancy. Hmm. Fuck off. Fuck nope, off. that's an actual that's an actual name. It is an in, it's an Indian movie, if you haven't picked up on it. Yeah, I picked that up by like Burf. the second name, but mm-hmm. Baby Nancy. Baby Nancy. The most Indian name you've ever heard, right, James? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, back to your, your thing. So the feet stuff gets worse in yeah, Victoria. It, I don't, I don't, I've only, I think I've seen some, I think I've already said I've seen some episodes of Victoria's, but I don't ever remember there being any foot stuff in it. There, There's a very gratuitous, like, opening where Vic, Victoria's is, which is her fucking name for some reason. Her, Vic- uh, yeah, her name is Victorious. I <laughs> I'm just going to call her Tori because like, I don't want to call her That's Victorious. what everyone t- called her in the show, right? Yeah. I just, I don't want to call her Victorious. I know it's her actual real name too. Wow. What a, what a humble name. <laughs> <laughs> fucking got him. <laughs> oh God. Uh, <laughs> Tori, she's like shooting a bow and arrow with her feet for no reason. Yeah. Uh, but then in the online content, there's I mean, shooting a bow and arrow with your feet doesn't sound so bad. No, but it's not necessary, JD. That's true. I mean, it's is like, but like seventy percent of the show isn't necessary. Yeah, but this one, this was a child. <laughs> it was a child shooting a bow and arrow with her feet. <laughs> It, it makes it weirder, you know. Yeah, things that it, that oh, have children in it I, I also even, make it pretty weird. I didn't even bring up the fact that Quentin makes a list of the in-universe canon, like big a list major, of canon. Yeah, so there's a big major story events that just get very loosely brought up sometimes. Like one mm-hmm. of the cast members from the TV show Friends drowns just randomly. Like that's just a weird random plot point in an episode. 
in an episode? There's like, yeah, uh, David Schwimmer from Friends drowned. And they're like, oh, well, guess he's dead. We're never going to have that Friends reunion. And that carries over to other shows as well. Uh-huh. There's, it, 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 it's so fucking weird, man. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't remember where exactly this is, but it is canon because it's connected to the other TV shows that there is a robot uprising in the future. OK, whoa, hold on. I got to clarify some things because I'm on the I'm on the Victoria's Wiki side right now <laughs> as you're saying stuff, because I want to Google it to see what these characters look like, because I don't remember. I don't know anything about this. Number one. Birth, birth defect is not his canon name in the show. Oh, did it? they change it? it? It doesn't say it is. It says his name is Birth Bertholomew. That's his first name. I don't does know what his last, his last name, name is. It doesn't say his last name, okay, but it does say it, it does say that his his character was named based on an inside joke between the main cast, and they called him Birth Defect. Mm -hmm. That's not his name, though. No, but that was the that that was his name. Number like, two. They had it written on there. Number two, Victorious is not her name. It's Victoria. And then, uh, and then they, they, and then Tori is her nickname in the show. That's number two. Right. I always forget that they just straight up use the actor's fucking real name sometimes. Like just their genuine Is the actor actual actually name. named Victoria Vega? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Oh. I think like something along that. Victoria Vega or something. Or her real name is Victorious Justice or something. One of the two. I think Vega is her TV show name, and then yeah. Justice is her real name, but Victoria and Victorious is, like, in there. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't know fucking why, but, like, Drake and Josh, their real names are Drake and Josh. Oh, yeah, it is. Her name is Victoria Justice. It. That's also a pretty humble name. <laughs> being a real dick to, to something that no, she's completely no, no, out of her control Katie, but Katie. her character is a complete asshole it's fine that's all that's great referring but, uh, to victoria vega by the way yes victoria okay. vega yeah it's, it's okay to dunk on her a little bit i, I have no idea who victoria just is like in real life so it feels like the Cody Ko <laughs> meme, like, oh, just get dunked on. Get dunked on. <laughs> it's like the foot scene goes on and we're like watching, we're watching the iCarly like Japan special and when the Japanese people start like talking, we both do that Cody Ko bit where it's like, oh, and then we get off of our seats. Ew. <laughs> what? what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I, uh. Yeah, like the uh, the actor who plays Burf in an interview years later confirmed that that was the name that they told him was the official name for the character. Oh. And it was like even online, it was like that for a little bit. But I guess they've changed it now. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was fucking Burf effect. That's the most fucked up thing is that they just literally named the character this and nothing about him is wrong. There's Hilarious. nothing wrong with the person, but he's also the only gay character and his name Burf defect. <laughs> it's just hilarious, James. It's fucking, it's you know, fucking sometimes weird, it's yeah. okay to make fun of gay people. <laughs> yeah. Is it okay to make fun of gay people for, for in, in terms of birth defects? That's up to you. <laughs> Whoa, JD. Is it okay to make fun of gay people for how they were born? That's up to you. I'm not saying anything about it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there, there's the whole cast and everything. They're very... They're very mean people. Like they're not. They I'm don't sure they have are. good character arcs. They're just all horrible people. But even Ariana Grande's character was mean. Yeah, she she has a kill count of I think four people officially. Kill count like killed them dead. Yeah, dead. Like, not a live kind in of the kill. TV show, not alive. Like canonical deaths. Show, in the TV show, canonically, she kills four fucking people, and they just shrug and pass it off. It's again, Quentin goes over this manslaughter. Or like murder, <laughs> manslaughter. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but huh. also Robbie in the online content. I don't remember what it was, but he just he just randomly like turns, like it's a weird cutaway gag, where he's just sitting there and he says something. Then he turns to his side and it just cuts to a guy sitting in a chair like on the uh, floor below him, yeah. and he just picks up a brick and fucking full on chucks at this guy, and the guy gets fucking knocked in the head. And it's like a gnarly crunch, so he's and yeah. you see the guy fall out of the chair, and in the background, he never moves the rest of the video. 
<laughs> and then he That's does it funny. again. <laughs> While he's not moving. Yeah. Wait a minute. Is his name Ravi Shapiro? Yes, his name is Ravi Shapiro. <laughs> 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 Jay's hypothetically <laughs> for the sake of the argument if his name was Robbie Shapiro I should have brought it up and sooner. he looks like that <laughs> I should have brought it up sooner I know <laughs> what an amazing name dude I love that he's 140 pounds soaking wet yeah. uh, the car- his puppet by the way is supposed to be black his puppet Rex, mm-hmm. Rex Powers, is yes. one of the eight main characters of Victoria's. <laughs> he also there exists within the Victoria's TV show a like a fake uh, Jimmy Kimmel like sort of after show hosted yeah. by the puppet, and he he sexually assaults every female character and kidnap and kidnap. The actor who plays Robbie, he kidnapped his little sister. In, That's in the show? canon. Not in the show. The, in the supposed real world canon, because these are the actors using their real names and real voices and playing themselves. Mm-hmm. In the real world, not only does he sexually assault these people in the regular Wait, so this the puppet that, is sexually assaulting things? The puppet. The puppet is an existing person, apparently. It's it's not Robbie. It's not Robbie. It's okay. a puppet. In the show, by the way, they several times they make it apparent that the puppet can talk and move without Robbie. It is alive. Oh, so it's just supernatural. It's supernatural, but they never address it. Okay, and that's cool. Okay. In, in the after show for this TV show that is supposed to be the real world, mm-hmm. the puppet sexually assaults people and like sexually harasses and apparently to the point that they like have to uh, they're, they're only doing the like uh, interview as a courtesy to the like company and like they are like have a restraining order against him and he kidnapped matt bennett the actor who plays robbie he kidnapped his sister his real life sister and his real life weird, sister his real life sister and it's such a weird in scene. this online like uh, canon thing in real life. online canon it's an episode it's an episode in the show that's this after show thing it's so weird ah it's so fucking weird, man. Cause he's just like, he's just like, huh? How's your sister doing, Matt? And he's like, what did you do? And he's, like, oh, I haven't done anything. Yeah, I haven't done anything. Psych. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, so he has a British accent for some reason. And oh. It's just. And it's, it's genuinely really funny though, cause the guy who plays Robbie, he's screaming. He's like, "Where is my sister? What have you done?" He's Where like, you? Calm "Yeah." And it's, down, the, it's just like this song that's playing like in that TikTok that you keep sending me. <laughs> it's like that situation. Is that where that, that inspiration came from? I feel like that's that's like part of where it's came from. I'll have to, I'll have to, like, where did you where'd you take my where'd you hide my family <laughs> Matt <laughs> you think this is a joke <laughs> I don't even remember what the song is but I remember it was like this like light hearted like get video game music <laughs> it sounded like it was from Undertale it probably was but uh yeah yeah that's for some reason that's the holy genuine. crap i was scrolling through this victorious uh victorious wiki and i stumbled upon this little excerpt you want to read i'm gonna read it out to you real quick so <laughs> it's it's titled cat's new boyfriend and i'm pretty sure that's the title for an episode or something yeah probably cat's new boyfriend in cat's new boyfriend trina's feet are very smooth and many of her fellow students are eager to feel them including yes. robbie yeah, I forgot about that one. Trita tells Robbie to come over to her house after school and she'll show him. He does so and discovers that Trita is using exotic fish to nibble away the dead skin on her feet, making them smooth. That is yeah. so... Hmm. I forgot about that one. That is... Hmm. Uh, also, Trina is the new Lubert. You're supposed to hate her. But she uh-huh. doesn't ever do anything wrong and the characters are unnecessarily violent towards her. Isn't and she Quint- just annoying? She's supposed to be, but also not really. Like mm-hmm. she's not really annoying though. You know, as you say it's that, there's a gif there's a gif of uh Trina being forced to take antibiotics by another character. I think yeah. that's the goth girl. And she's like uh, she, she's like literally like 
<laughs> she, like strangling her forehead. <laughs> this antibiotic. Yeah, so in that episode, uh Oh, I just had a hiccup again. Uh Trina like is doing something. Her parents care an entire character point is that her characters I mean her parents hate her. Huh. Again, a weird thing yeah. that makes the character weirdly sympathetic because they never show a reason for the parents to hate her because she never does anything to the parents. Mm -hmm. So they just hate her for no reason, just very maliciously. Okay. And it, her sister has to take care of her. And then she's like all loopy because like she has a, she's like on anesthetics and everything. It's like after you get your wisdom teeth like pulled out and everything. And, Tr and uh, Tori is so reluctant to do anything to help her sister in this state to the point that she literally just ties and duct tapes her up. And Robbie comments after seeing her tied and duct tape up, he says, is she breathing? Tori turns around and looks at her. She's not breathing. And she goes, I guess we'll find out later. Cue laugh track. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> JD. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and they just, they're so mean to her this entire episode, too. And it's so weird. And then. I mean, I understand it. I hate her, too. I even watched the show. I hate her. Nuts. Holy crap. It's my least favorite character in all of media now. <laughs> the, <laughs> Quinn, Quinn has a theory that then gets proven later by an episode where it happens that Tori is not actually an annoying character who like actually is how she is she's just putting on a thing because she thinks this will make people like her more and then there's an episode where people are actually like being nice to her and being kind to her and she's just a genuinely good person she just like stops acting the way she does she's like very happy and just by smiling and kind of like just having fun and then it turns out that it was just all prank and that they were just fucking pranking her the whole time and like it's <laughs> such a sad and heartless <laughs> room, like room it's hilarious no dude fucking reason hilarious <laughs> Like, they got your moment. It's so fucking weird, man. Oh, there's a there's a there's an episode called Rex Dies. Yeah, Rex Dies. Rex Dies. Rex and dies. it's like a sentence long synopsis of this episode. Yeah, because Rex dies. Yep. There's <laughs> also the another one that I just that I see right underneath that says a uh, walk star. Like uh like the walk Johnson, J <laughs> Dwayne the Walk Johnson. As in, like, an Asian thing. <laughs> it's also a sentence-long synopsis. Yeah, what does uh, that one say? Trina in Walkstar. Trina and Andre pretend to be a non-existent diva celebrity named Jackie Bonnet and her bodyguard to help Tori and Jade keep Mrs. Lee away from Jade's play. Okay, so that's leaving out so many details. I know exactly the episode that is. So, <laughs> Jade... <laughs> Yeah, the only time okay. Jade's character has character development. First of all, let's appreciate the funny pun that is Walkstar, okay? I think because they meant, because, you know, Rockstar, oh, yeah. and this, instead this, it's Walkstar. This is another Q episode that track. has a very, a very odd and weird depiction of Asian people, where it's just, she's a very callous woman, and just is incredibly rude to everyone, and only cares about fame and everything. <laughs> it is so I like how when I click on Miss Lee, the picture they use is her in, like, a Japanese, like... <laughs> traditional yeah. japanese outfit yeah that again <laughs> rob schneider has never met an asian person in his life <laughs> dude rob schneider probably has a ton of uh asian friends you just don't know James. I, 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 you're you wouldn't know a, you're gonna say he has a ton of asian porn <laughs> <What>? <laughs> uh but yeah in that episode jade with her like very little bit of character development confides in tori that like She's putting on this play and she really wants her father to be proud of it. It's like the one of the few times that she's not being a mean person that they allow her to have like any sort of like change in her character. And mm -hmm. uh, to do it, they had to agree to have Miss Lee fund the play because they couldn't. Miss Lee is the owner of like a food, like a Chinese restaurant and everything. Mm -hmm. A that Chinese they, uh... restaurant named Nozu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we made that we, have, we insinuated that there's much more than than actually was there <laughs> no, I, I know it's just like they they like make it sound like it's more about the fucking diva part but it's really just the play and then the diva part is like one scene yeah in the entire episode it's literally only talked about once and shown uh -huh. once and then it's done oh do you know who miss lee's friend is in the show who somebody named quincy would you look at that <laughs> Quentin Quincy. 
Uh, but Miss Lee wants them to have her kid in the play and everything. Right. But her kid sucks, and like she keeps making changes to the play as well. So they tie up her kid, hang her from the ceiling, and never lower her back down. Oh. And, and then they keep Miss Lee preoccupied with the whole diva thing while they put on the show. And like she, they impress Jade's father and everything. And then it's like, also, this is one of the ver- like one of the times where it's weirdly made so that Tori and Jade are really gay for each other. <laughs> I I don't know who Jade is. Who's Jade? Uh, the goth girl. Oh, okay. Huh. And like this was a very Jade centric episode. Why but is there just of- one sentence in this episode synoptic uh, synopsis? Like I clicked on it, and there's more to say now. <laughs> And there's one sentence that's just, it feels like it coming out of nowhere. It says, Mrs. Lee's daughter was almost adopted by Angelina Jolie. Yeah, that was a... I don't know if that's talking about the actress. I don't think so, but... Okay. That yeah, might I don't a, think so. That might be a weird one-off sentence that I just don't remember. That is, like, in reference to the fact that Angelina Jolie... I, I'm inclined to believe that it's like true. I'm inclined to believe that this is true, and it's based off some line that was said in the episode. So It probably is, but hmm. it's also, like, one of those weird things that's just, like, this This is kind of odd. She doesn't get... She, under, she doesn't understand why Hollywood arts called her daughter irritating and talentless. <laughs> yeah, man, what a poor kid. Yeah. Imagine, imagine being talentless. Could be me. <laughs> Could, couldn't imagine it. Yeah, dude. Uh, I relate just... more to the assholes who pick on these people instead. It says <laughs> no one ever watching this show. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's just there's a lot of weird stuff that happens. Uh, the characters of Beck and Jade, aka Leon S. Kennedy from the new Welcome to Raccoon City movie. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. The goth girl. Brother. Uh, they Their relationship is apparently very toxic, and I don't remember it being toxic like it was. I thought it was a lot more, like, wholesome. But no, it's it's horrible, dude. Like, they, it's so fucking bad. I don't know why they did this. It's, it's Also, his entire character arc is that he's just a fuckboy. He's from Canada. Oh. That's that's his whole character. That's hilarious, dude. I love I love the um was I love I love like the little quirks that each character has and Yeah makes Ariana, them differentiate from everyone else. Ariana Grande by the way, Andre's character is the only black guy. The only actual black guy, not the puppet. James, the puppet is black puppet representation, no, no, dude. What are you doing? What are you okay? doing? Okay. Doubt. Doubt. What I'm doing is I'm trying to get you to understand, okay? I I understand that you're really right lean, right wing leaning, and you really got these conservative views. But I'm trying to open up your mind, okay? I'm trying to open up your mind. The puppet is voiced by one of the writers doing a black accent, and they never (laughs) see doing a a black British accent. Sorry, no, because they only do the British accent during the interview things. The rest Uh of the time, he's just doing like a what they call an urban accent because they never say a black accent. And they never say they never say black. They only ever say urban. Mm-hmm. Which makes it which makes it so much better, James. I mean, it's uh-huh. it's basically yes, it's basically it's- like a free pass in my book. <laughs> it might not be a free pass in most people's books, but in my book, it gets a free pass. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? I saw that. <laughs> yelling i'm having to dodge around my other chair that's in the room and look you know behind now it. that you're now that you bring up that there's more feet stuff scrolling through this wiki i completely understand why you say that oh yeah there's so much like i haven't begun to get into it uh sinjin has a pup dude rob schneider show. definitely doubled down on the feet stuff in this one <laughs> he did he really did the character sinjin on the online content has weird uh sock puppet stuff and there's even an episode <laughs> so when Quinn goes over this it's so shocking to see but also entirely funny Andre again the only black character until birth mm-hmm. uh, but the only actual black character walks in on Sinjin doing a puppet show where it's Abraham Lincoln and Sinjin after he time travels and Sinjin calls Abraham Lincoln a bad president <laughs> you wanna know why wait, JD? Who the, wait who's Sinjin again <laughs> the weird guy weird ginger guy who's like a weird creep oh, like okay. on the outside of the group. Yeah. He's Burf's best friend and everything. Okay. And Sinjin's doing a puppet show 
where he's like having this he's thing. He's calling Abraham. Abraham Lincoln a bad president. Mm-hmm. He time travels in front of Andre. Andre walks in on him doing this. Hey, okay. hey, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey. Get down from there. Yeah. I'm going to shoot at her. I'm having to shoot at her. Hey. Hey. Why is there a, a listing named females in Victoria's Wiki? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's really it's really good. Wow. All oh, wait, and, and underneath females, there's a category called all items 96. So I guess there's still <laughs> finally whoa, a website I can get behind. Too based. <laughs> um, Jesus. But, uh, God. He walks in on him. I can't do this skit justice because it's so funny if you watch it. But hilarious. He, he walks in on Sinjin doing this puppet show and like just literally stands the whole time. And Sinjin is like going in on Abraham Lincoln, calling him bad president. He's like, you didn't do anything to help the people. <laughs> roasting good. Roasting <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, and he's like, he's bordering on the verge of saying that slavery was a bad choice the entire time. <laughs> like uh-huh. ending slavery was a bad choice. They should have kept it. And Andre is just standing there watching it off to the side. <laughs> it's so fucking weird, dude. I don't know who this was for or why it was made, but... <laughs> He, he stops him before he can it's say anything funny. too damning. And, like, you just see Sinjin shoot up straight, fucking hide the pop sock, like, the sock puppets, and just stare off in the space as Andre's just staring. He's like, what were you doing there, Singe? And Sinjin's like, you don't, you don't need to know, Andre. And he's like, why do you keep doing this, man? Why do you keep doing this? <laughs> Implying that he keeps doing it. No, because this is like the eighth pop- sock puppet show he's done, and they're all very gross and weird. <laughs> what so do you mean gross? That's weird. hilarious, man. Um, because a lot of them are just weird, like like mind fantasies. Because he's an incel. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? What are you what doing? The hey, heck? Hey, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I'm having to shoot at my cat with a fake gun. Get her get down. Hey. Um, oh. But yeah, it's it's so fucking weird, man. Mm. <laughs> but um uh shit. There was like some stuff earlier to talk about. I can't remember anymore. Uh there's I guess a that's whole... a good place to end then unless hey, you got something hey, else. Hey, hey, hey. Uh Sam and Cat. Oh, okay. Is hey, it, that's hey, the hey, one hey. that he hasn't watched yet though, right, Quentin? He he's watched it and he's only put out half the review. Oh, and the I thing see. is, the thing is, they were they were a lot like everyone when he got to this one. They kept going, "Oh yeah, Quinn, this one will be super easy. It's only one season, but it's one season that's thirty five episodes long." Hmm. And for example, every other season of Victorious and iCarly was only ten ten episodes long. Uh-huh. I'm gonna I'm just gonna really quick throw my cat out of the room. So, uh, okay, okay. He's not actually throwing his cat out of the room. He's just strangling it, killing it. So like that's the that's the sound of him just dying right there. Hmm. Uh huh. I see uh one of the one the interest one of the interests of of a character is seeing people in pain. Wait, who? Uh the the goth girl. Yeah, she uh oh yeah, there are several times where she tries to kill Tori. Yeah, for some reason, it's uh, she just really hates Tori. I guess that's just like everyone in the show, but I guess she particularly hates her. In real life, I her actress and Ariana Grande's actress are like best friends. Oh, so the, go- the goth girl and Ariana Grande get along? Yeah, well, sometimes. Like, that's a weird thing that only happens like the last season where they have like a friendship. Hmm. Despite the fact that their actresses are real life best friends since like childhood. <laughs> um, yeah. And also, in show, these actors were all actually 16 and stuff. Why is they? Why do they list their weaknesses in here? <laughs> Let's hear them. Well, the goth girls' weaknesses listed: jealousy, anger, and trust issues with Beck. Who the heck's Beck? That's the uh, fuck boy who plays Leon S. Kennedy. Oh, I see. Leon S. Kennedy looks just like him. <laughs> <laughs> Spitty, uncanny. I think he did a good job. Yeah? Well, you be the minority, I guess. How's it feel to be a minority now? I've always known. <laughs> huh. Wow, that's, um... That's quite... Ooh, Rex Powers has a wiki, uh... Yeah, let's hear his him. weaknesses. Sure. 
Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, if anything stands out crazy to me, enemies. He has enemies. Yeah, a lot. Other than other other than, I thought everyone would just be his enemy, but I guess I guess not. Um, Cat Valentine listed as one of them. I guess that's mm-hmm. Ariana Grande, right? Yeah, that's Ariana Grande. Jade West, so the goth girl, mm-hmm. and then Trina Vega, but only sometimes. They don't <laughs> list like. Robbie or Matt Pettit. Whoa, interests. North Ridge girls, huh? Yeah, so North Ridge is another high school. Uh-huh. And also Keenan Thompson shows up as Keenan Thompson and hits on North Ridge girls while being Keenan Thompson of like 30 years old. Wait, Keenan who's Keenan Thompson? You know, from SNL. Keenan Tom oh Keenan Thompson. I I need to see a face. You'll oh, recognize yeah, him. I, I recognize him. He shows up as Keenan Thompson in the crossover with iCarly as Keenan Thompson, Thompson playing Keenan Thompson. <laughs> it is Keenan Thompson, and he hits on Northridge girls, aka high schoolers, JD. And James <laughs> and Felia. don't pretend like you haven't done that either. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks so much for watching. You if you guys enjoyed, you, you should wouldn't. you should like <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> we do this every Sunday. And if you want to put James on a watch list, too. (laughs) So you see in Sam and Cat, what happens is that they open up a uh, babysitting thing uh, because babysitting company. Yeah, babysitting company, because in the last season of Victorious, it's revealed that Cat no longer lives with her parents Uh uh, and has been living inside the attic of the school. What? Uh huh. And uh, then she wants to live with her grandma, but her grandma doesn't live. I'm sorry, her Nona and her Nona doesn't live in uh, California. Nona doesn't live in California anymore. She lives in Venice. But then they find out okay. it's Venice, California. Oh. Like, you know, Paris, Texas. Yes. Like, why the fuck do we name these places these things? So we can but, fuck uh, with the actual original location? So, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's like an Austin, Nevada, too. It's like this city of Venice sues city of Venice, California. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, she like lives in Venice, California, so Kat's like, yeah, I can live here. And then that's how Sam and Kat opens up, because it literally transitions over like that. And Sam's in Venice? And Sam's in Venice, because at the end of iCarly, Sam left uh, Seattle, Washington, on her motorcycle uh-huh. after getting it from not Rob Schneider. <laughs> getting it from not Rob Schneider. Getting it from a man made of getting pure it, TV static. Getting it from the uh, the alternate that impersonated <laughs> Rob Schneider. <laughs> the alternate. <laughs> uh, and uh, and so that show goes, and it was only supposed to be ten episodes, and then the the episode order got doubled and then tripled, and then again, uh, ten more were added on. So originally they were supposed to do forty episodes for their first season. But Dang. were, but only filmed thirty five. Oh, only, huh? Only, <laughs> only. Man, what a, what a terrible man. That sucks. You know what I really wanted, James? I wanted those five episodes in that season one of Sam and Cat. It would have really, really shaped the story. Was Sam and Cat as like bad as the other ones, or was it not long enough worse. to be bad? It was worse. Again, it was only one season and thirty five episodes. But somehow it was worse. It doubled down even more? Even more. It was a quadruple down. And was Rob Schneider part of that too? Uh-huh. Because guess what? Guess what Ariana Grande Dude. tweeted out when reaching the show was new, over? Reaching new boundaries. Rob Schneider, my man. He's, <laughs> he's what we call a pioneer. When, when it was over, Ariana Grande tweeted out how she was so thankful to have this career and everything, how she'd been playing this character for so many years, how yeah. it was really impacting her. And at the end of this giant, big tweet, she ended it with, and thank you to one Mr. Rob Schneider. Thank you, Always Rob there helping Schneider. me. <laughs> Always there helping me when I needed you most. <laughs> thank God for Rob Schneider. <laughs> Who would we be without him? <laughs> If you the guys world, enjoyed, the world may never know. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed, you should like. So there's a character named Dice JD, and he wears a fedora, <laughs> and he's always selling things. <laughs> he's always selling things like spikes, aka spoon knives. But you why know, are they called spikes? A lot of the things that you told me doesn't sound that bad, and it sounds like it's just a hilarious show. 
because I haven't explained it like Quentin does because I don't have over 24 hours to show you it. <laughs> Go watch it for yourself. Honestly, you. You, you make it sound like a really fun show to watch. And I wouldn't doubt if anyone who watched this goes and watches the show now. His name is Go- Goomer. I think his name is Goomer. Goomer? Goomer or Goober. But if you sure want to hear Goomer. more about Goomer, he, you should tune in to the next episode grown, like, of Crap Shoot. He's a thirty year old Every Sunday. We do it every Sunday. And, and he, he makes friends with If you enjoyed, you need to like, subscribe. You can anime. find James so in the description below. And then in the show he actually Animal doesn't Danger. upload anymore. In the show but that Henry will be Danger. it. Bring us out, James. In the show called Henry Danger, Goomer shows up as Goomer. And then he says... Oh, 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 oh,